All right, I am very happy to present the first speaker, Walter Longo from USC Davis, who will probably tell us something about fasting. All right, uh, thanks. Uh, thanks for the invitation. Happy to be in Copenhagen for the first time, actually. So uh, <clears throat> my lab works on, um, on lots of things, but uh, one of them is, uh, or the major one is uh, uh, fasting. And, um, and so uh, this is my disclosure slide. And so uh, I was always interested since the days that we're, we were working on starving bacteria and starving yeast, we were interested about this, uh, this idea that mammals, at least some mammals or lots of mammals, can undergo, like these emperor penguins of the South Pole, can undergo long terms, uh, long periods of starvation, months, and in those long periods of starvation, they actually shrink, and then, then when they refeed, they re-expand, right? So I've always been very interested uh, what happens in that process? A very simple idea, right? They shrink and then re-expand. And what happens in this, in this process of shrinking and re-expansion? And um, so many years forward, we were working with cancer. We started testing fasting and fa uh, fasting in combination with chemotherapy. Actually, we made it to the clinical trial. And when we made it to the clinical trial, we realized that nobody wanted to fast, at least not do water-only fasting. Um, and we had shown in mice that water-only fasting could protect the mice, but not the cancer cells from chemotherapy uh, toxicity. And so uh, we went to the National Cancer Institute, the National Institute of Aging, and got funded for the fasting mimicking diet. And this was uh, meant for cancer patients originally, and then we expanded it to uh, use, use for lots of different uh, reasons. So this is a low calorie, low sugar, low protein, uh, high fat, plant-based, uh, uh, the, the fasting mimicking diet that has the job of matching water-only fasting for at least four markers, IGF-1, IGF-BP-1, uh, glucose, and ketone bodies. Okay, so then um, in, uh, just uh, uh, some slides on, on the all work in, in mice. Um, so when Sebastian uh, uh, took this fasting mimicking diet and exposed the mice twice a month, starting at 16 months of age, to this fasting making diet, the, uh, the uh, um, let me see if I can do this. Yeah, the uh, the effect was uh, to increase the level of white blood cells. Uh, this is after five months on the on these two cycles a month of the fasting making diet. Increase the white blood cell count back to the uh, more youthful level, and also increase the lymphoid myeloid ratio uh, back to a uh, a more youthful level. And this was then associated with uh, uh, lifespan extension and lots of other benefits, which I don't have time uh, to go through. Um, but um, the other interesting thing, uh, connecting to what I just told you about, is this shrinking of, of multiple organs, right? The kidney, the heart, the liver. And, the, and this is the, during, at the end of the fasting mimicking diet, right? And this is after refeeding. So if you see that, after refeeding, there is always a trend for even an increase in the size of the organ compared to the uh, untreated mice, right? So, so not only it shrinks, but it, when it re-expands, it becomes a little bit even bigger than, than in the mice that were not fasted at all. Um, so, Ansel Keys actually, in the 1940s, uh, did uh, studies that could never be repeated again, so he starved people. And, uh, and in these starvation experiments actually showed that this lasted for weeks, uh, 16 and 24 weeks. And they showed that, of course, the fat during long-term semi-starvation, the fat mass goes way down, but also the lean body mass goes way down, right? And, the, um, and so this is the, the soft tissue. It goes way down. And actually, the heart size was reduced by 41%. So now that it's a mostly non-dividing organ, is reduced in size by 41%, and then it refeeds these patients and they re-expands back to the normal size. Right? So what, what happens is to these cells, right? And, and nobody knows, at least nobody knows well. Uh, so we did a lot of work in mice, and this is was one of them. So what happens if you take the bone marrow from, uh, this is actually work that we did on cancer, but fasted plus cyclophosphamide treated mice versus cyclophosphamide only treated mice. So chemotherapy treated or fasted plus chemotherapy treated. And so long story short, the, um, the uh, stem cells uh, are increased 
And these stem cells in that transplanted mouse are able to produce more peripheral blood cells. They're more active, they're more functional, and, uh, and they're so functional that they can restore the normal lymphoid myeloid ratio. This is a, a measure of immune, at least one of the measures of immune uh, uh, senescence or, or, or lack of immune senescence, right? So, um, and also the, the stem cells uh, in all mice, uh, at least the profile, there is a, it can be lymphoid biased, uh, balanced or myeloid biased. And, and so the, the cycles of the fasting making diet restored, or the fasting actually in this case, restore the more youthful uh, uh, profile of hematopoietic stem cells. Okay, so then I don't have time to go through the, the molecular part, but uh, let's say the growth hormone IGF-1 and PKA, actually I didn't let's say it's PKA, some of the usual suspects, at least for yeast aging, um, they, uh, they were blocking these effects on, uh, of, of uh, food and hematopoietic stem cells self renewal and activation. Okay, so then, and on order, we looked at lots of organs. I'm just going to show you two, two examples. This one is the pancreas. So in this case, Chao Wei and Roberta and, and Valentina uh, took a DBDB mice, uh, leptin receptor deficient. These mice develop hyperglycemia. In this case, they treated with a fasting making diet. So fasting making diet, four days, then followed by normal feeding uh, back and forth. And you see that um, when they did this, um, the, uh, the, DB, the glycemia is reduced, not to normal level, but close to normal level, and the, the death caused by this hypoglycemia is prevented, okay? Up to here, it, it's fairly expected. What was less expected, I think, in that study was the effect on the pancreas, and so here you see this is a type one diabetes model, and the treatment with streptocytosin, streptocytosin damages the, the eyeless cells and the beta cells, so that, you know, after five days and after 50 days, the, the red are insulin-producing beta cells. You see there's no more red uh, cells left. So these mice are not able to produce insulin. But if we start with the fasting-making diet, uh, they go uh, back to a normal level of insulin production, right? So uh, in this study, we were able to show uh, that lots of embryonic developmental genes. So the left uh, lane is the libidum feeding. The middle one is fasting-making diet cycles. And the right one is one day of refeeding after the fasting-making diet. You see, all these genes are embryonic developmental genes, or at least genes that are expressed or highly expressed mostly during embryonic development, including several Yamanaka factors, right? So now the pancreas is shrinking, and in that process of shrinking, just like we saw for the hematopoietic stem cells, is turning on these Yamanaka factors, not all of them, but several, and it's, going, it's, it's turning on all these genes that are associated with embryonic development, and in fact, leading to then functional beta cells producing again um, the, um, the beta cells. So, I mean, for the mammalian cells, PK and TOR uh, were, were involved, and uh, SOX17 and NGN3, and actually NGN3, these transcription factors involved in, in, in the development of the pancreas, uh, we, we actually proved that, that it was involved. Okay, so then jump into clinical studies, and today I just wanted to focus on clinical studies. Uh, so this is a, 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 a trial at Heidelberg University looking at monthly cycles of the fasting-making diet on diabetic patients and patients with diabetic nephropathy. And, the, uh, and in this case, the control was five, so it was five days of the fasting-making diet or five days of a Mediterranean diet, right? And, um, and so, um, and this is, is very interesting. It, it worked, I think, very well. This is the five days of the Mediterranean. I, th I think some, maybe this study was done originally to show that a Mediterranean diet could work as well as the fasting vegan diet. I don't know, but I, I suspect. But um, see here, the, in the, after six monthly cycles of the Mediterranean diet, 20% uh, of the patients have increased use of uh, diabetic drugs, diabetes drugs, 50% no change, and 30% reduction. And in the FMD instead, you see about 30% uh, uh, no change, and 70% actually reduced the, the drug use. And also, we're starting to see effects, similar effects. These were not hypertensive patients. They were diabetic, but we see a similar uh, effect, uh, although smaller, for the hypertensive uh, drugs. Uh, another trial that is not published yet, this is uh, Hanno Pill, our collaborator at the University of Leiden, 
And uh, this is 100 patients, 12 cycles of the fasting making diet, monthly. Again, diabetic patients. In this case, in the other case, was all drugs. In this case, is only metformin, right? So diabetic patients uh, taking metformin. And, and it worked, again, very well, very similar results. Uh, here, A1C um, the, um, if, if worked very well uh, for the uh, FMD group, not so well for the control. The reduction in A1C, reduction of glucose, uh, uh, lowering medication. Again, uh, most of the patient, uh, lots of the patient uh, saw a reduction in drug use, and this is glycemic ma management, meaning that either A1C was reduced or the reduction of the drugs uh, uh, was accomplished. Okay, so then um, we uh, had originally done this uh, trial on uh, normal subjects, and uh, this was 100 patient uh, randomized crossover clinical trial that we did at USC, and, um, and in this trial, um, the, um, uh, the, we, we show a reduction in body weight, abdominal fat, waist circumference, but also uh, no negative effects on absolute limb body mass, and actually an increase in relative limb body mass. And uh, uh, the other thing that was that is interesting, I think, if you look at uh, calorie restriction trials, they tend to drive down the, the lots of the, 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 these factors that I'm about to show you. So even if the uh, baseline, the glucose level are low, calorie restriction, chronic calorie restriction tends to reduce it further, same thing for cholesterol. Here we don't see this. And this, we think, is at least... Uh, in part consistent with this uh, rejuvenating effect. So blood glucose uh, in subjects that have normal baseline blood glucose stays the same. And in the pre-diabetic, you see a much uh, uh, higher e decrease. IGF-1, does they have IGF-1 lower than, than 200? Uh, not much of a change. And those that have high IGF-1, they have a much larger change. c protein, same thing. Uh, and uh, blood cholesterol, same thing. Those that have less than 200, we have a small uh, drop, and, and this is much higher for those that have uh, a chol a high cholesterol. And finally, systolic blood pressure, uh, less than 120, and higher than 120. Okay, so then this is a, a new trial uh, that is completed, and we're about to publish it. And uh, this is 84 patients, hypertensive uh, patients. And here it was against the uh, Mediterranean diet. So it's either four cycles of the fasting making diet or four cycles of the uh, or four months of a Mediterranean, a continuous Mediterranean diet. And some of the effects are the same. I'm just going to show you a few things from it. So leptin is reduced both by the Mediterranean diet and by the fasting making diet cycles. But some of the, uh, the markers are going in opposite direction. For example, adiponectin, insulin sensitizer. Um, is reduced, or there's a trend for reduction in the Mediterranean diet, and is increased in the uh, fasting-making diet group. Uh, another thing consistent with what I just showed you a second ago for the previous trial, the Mediterranean diet, after um, four months, causes three pounds of lean body mass loss, and uh, this doesn't happen in the FMD. And then after uh, four months and a three months follow-up, the Mediterranean diet shows uh, five pounds of limb body mass loss. And again, uh, no uh, significant reduction in limb body mass in the um, FMD group. Okay. So um, then uh, we looked at, as I showed you for mice, we looked at uh, lymphoid myeloid ratio. Um, and so... This is neither all the subjects in the 100 patient uh, randomized trial, this is still unpublished, uh, or only the over 40 uh, population. And you see in both cases, the, uh, the three fasting making diet cycles are able to increase the uh, lymphoid myeloid ratio consistent with the mouse data. Uh, so we see here, and we see here, and here's a little bit higher effect because this is in the um, 40 year olds or, or older. And uh, um, finally, <clears throat> the, um, the, in collaboration with Morgan Levine, we looked at uh, using our bioage uh, method. Uh, we looked at biological age, and in fact, showing about 2.5 years after three cycles of the FMD, two and a half years uh, reduction in, uh, in biological age. And so, um, to conclude, um, the um, 
uh, now we've, in the mouse studies, we looked at uh, many organs, the blood, pancreas, intestine, kidney, nervous system. We're looking at more organs, but in general, I think that um, this effect, this shrinking effect that I just told you about applies to lots of different organs. And, uh, and so I'm just using Walford, my, my former mentor, and his uh, time in, in Biosphere 2, where he, where he starved or semi-starved, and he went from this state before Biosphere 2 to this state when he was calorie restricted for a couple of years. And then he exits Biosphere 2, and of course, he goes back to, uh, to normal uh, weight. So, um, so you know, again, this shrinking and re-expansion effect, what happened to Walford in this, in this uh, 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 period, um, we suspect that uh, what we see in mice is also uh, probably happening at least to a certain level in humans. So in this case, white blood cells count uh, is reduced uh, drastically. Uh, and in, in the clinical trial, in the human clinical trial, actually white blood cell count is reduced about 20% uh, after seven days of a fasting mimicking diet. So white blood cell count is reduced. Uh, and, and at the end of this fasting period, the uh, LT LTHSCs, the self-renewing stem cells, are turned down, they're activated, and they start proliferating, but they represent a very small portion of the uh, blood population. And it, it is only during the refeeding that these stem cells can now give rise to an expansion of white blood cells, but also an expansion of the uh, of themselves, right, in, through a self-renewing process. And um, that's uh, all I have. Um, and I'm just gonna thank all the people. I, I, I thank most people already. Thank you. Thank you so much, Walter. So that was a really amazing talk. And uh, we have time for one or two questions. There's one down there. Yeah, so this is what I show both for mice and for two clinical trials, right? So it, there is no uh, lean body mass loss, right? So even after six cycles of the FMD, we don't see uh, any or, or if any, a very small lean body mass loss. So, so most of the fat, most of the uh, weight is lost from fat. Hi, that was a great talk. Thank you. Um, I wondered about the data on the toler tolerability of the fasting mimicking diet. During those few days, are people able to be active and go about their lives as normal? Yes, so you're asking about feasibility. Uh, I, yeah, I'm, you know, now I think we've done maybe, uh, we and many universities have done maybe over 20 trials. And uh, I think the exceptions, uh, the low compliance has been with the lack of uh, trained dietitians and nutritionists. So, and there was that Leiden actually had the lowest uh, long-term compliance because there were no uh, dietitians that were trained in fasting, fasting, making that. So, but when, when we have those involved, for example, in the diabetes trial, the compliance was uh, surprisingly over 70% after 12 cycles monthly, right? So, and now in Southern Italy, we're doing a large trial, 500 patients, and uh, we're only doing it once every three months, right? So we want to see... Uh, you know, making it much more doable by the population. And so we expect that, that the compliance is going to be even higher there, maybe in the 90%. Yeah. Can, again, thank you. Um, can you describe the fasting mimicking diet in a little bit more detail? Yes. So the FMD is a, about 1,100 cal for normal subjects. Of course, we have those for cancer and lots of other diseases. But for normal subjects, it's 1,100 calories on day one and then it drops to 800 calories on day two, three, four, five. Uh, high fat, low protein, low sugar. It's not that low in carbohydrate, and that was done on purpose. I did not want this yo-yo uh, this uh, ketogenic high ketosis and very low back and forth. I was I'm just worried about that, and I think it was the correct uh, call, right? So it's relatively high in carbohydrate. It's not a ketogenic diet, um, very high in fat and low in sugar and uh, low, very low in proteins.
Okay, okay, this one works. Would you recommend using a fast mimicking diet in patients on glip ones like Ozempic or Wigowi? And, sorry, second point if possible, how would you explain um, the lean body mass loss in Mediterranean diet? Yeah, um, the, the, that's been reported in, in a number of trials, right? Probably the switch in, in, in diet, maybe going from lots of meat and lots of uh, proteins from less to less. Now, as far as Ozempic, et cetera, um, we're a little worried about the combination of, with Ozempic, uh, but uh, I know there are physicians that are using it with liraglutide because it's got much shorter effect. And so, and they use it to, to get rid of the hunger in the first couple of times people do the fasting making diet. And so they've been very successful with that method, liraglutide, uh, just to get the hunger away. And then the patients are okay with the FMD and eventually they don't even need the drug. Um, so yeah, so, and the idea of course here is that uh, after one year, I think we see 15% of the patients that are diabetes free, right? So 70% reduce the drug and 15% are, are diabetes free, uh, free. And of course the Ozempic sort of keeps you in that state uh, for life, you know, at least according to the data. All right, thank you so much, Walter. That was a really fantastic talk.